Today, I'm doing an interview with a 12-year-old boy I'll call Willie in order to protect his privacy. Willie has albino. It's called albinism. It's albinism. When did you realize you had albinism or that you were different? When my mom told me. When my parents told me, that was when I learned. Why do your eyes move back and forth? Because I have albinism. <laughs> they do that, I don't really know why. Because I have albinism. I thought people with albinism had pink eyes. Some of them do, but they can have any colored eyes. They can have any colored eyes. <clears throat> they can have any colored eyes. Do you see the same as other people do? Sadly, no. I see worse than other people do. Yep. I wish. I don't see as well. Why don't you just wear glasses? Because glasses only fix normal people's sight problems, not mine. Because glasses only fix human, ain't normal problems. <laughs> yeah, they don't fix albinism. Can you go into the sunlight? Yeah, except for I have to wear sunscreen or wear a hat or sunglasses. Do you have special powers, like the boy from the movie Powder? I wish. That would be fun, but I don't. I wish, but sadly I don't. Have you found that people are prejudiced against you because of the way you look? No. Yeah, but the people who do that are just jealous and, or, or stupid. One or other. Does anybody else in your family have albinism? No. I have a brother with black hair and a brother with brown eyes. People, normal people. I have a brother with black hair and I have a brother with brown eyes. Yeah, so they look like normal people. What things are most difficult for you? Mm, catching stuff. Seeing. Well, seeing would have to be somewhere on that list. Um, catching a ball that usually nails me right in the face. Um, yeah, quite a few things. Do you play sports? No. Like I said before, the ball always ends up nailing me in the face. Or somewhere. <laughs> Do you ride a bike? I used to until I ran into stuff. Now I don't anymore and I forgot how. What sort of things do you enjoy doing? <clears throat> I enjoy um, using the computer, um, going on the internet, playing Sims, yeah, stuff like that. Have you ever had the chance to meet other people with albinism? Yeah, one time I went to the Braille School, and then I met some people there. What did you have in common with them? Albinism. Not much, really. What did you talk about? Albinism. <laughs> we talked about albinism. Oh, yeah, we talked about our favorite food. We didn't talk about our favorite color, I know that. <laughs> uh, yeah. What sort of things do you do at the Iowa Braille and Sight Saving School? Stuff. <laughs> I don't really know. remember, I guess. How do most of your teachers react, react to your albinism? 
they don't know how to react. They don't really usually see people with albinism because it's so rare. Are they helpful? Not one bit. Do you have somebody to help you mainstream into the regular classroom? Like Kim? <laughs> <laughs> you think you should stop <laughs> Okay. Stop the video. Yes, I do. I, it's around once a month that they come over to my school. What is the most difficult thing for you to do in school? Well, this has nothing to do with albinism, but it's math. Math is the hardest thing to do in school. If a person has albinism, does that mean they aren't as smart as other people? No. They are as smart as other people. Yeah, my year test scores would show that. If you can't see, how will you get around in the world? Walking. Um, if I ride in, I, if, I mean, if I live in a big town, I can ride the city bus to work. Yeah, I can work and do stuff like a normal person. Will you be able to work as an adult? Most likely. <laughs> If you had the opportunity to tell people something you think they should know about albinism, what would you tell them? Well, it doesn't come with special power. <laughs> and put sunscreen on yourself. Because <laughs> if you don't wear sunscreen with albinism, you're dead, basically. You're going to burn. If somebody you knew had just had a baby with albinism and knew nothing about albinism, what advice would you give them? Don't let your baby burn. When I was a baby, my parents didn't know anything about albinism. And then they let me burn. And then, to make matters worse, they watched powder. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's all I can give you. Is there anything else I should have asked, but I didn't? No, you asked everything, I'm pretty sure. Okay, well, thank you, Willie, for this interview. But I, Willie, is going to crush Lee Khan. <laughs> See, it's crushified. Okay. With your hands? Oh, I can put my leg behind my head. Let's see that. Ooh, yeah, me. Off my chair. Wow, that's really something. Oh, I can drive my feet. Test my toes. This represents a person with albinism. He has two recessive genes. If two people with albinism meet, you might have this. This represents a person without albinism who is not a carrier, meaning he has no gene for albinism. He will not have an albino child unless there is a new mutation during the baby's development. Because the phenotype, the way a person looks, does not always show whether a person is a carrier or not, a person can be a carrier and not know. This is how it happens. Here are the possibilities. At the time Willie was born, it was said that in the United States, about 1 in 100 people were carriers and about 1 in 10,000 had albinism.